by the 1990s, people were beginning to reflect on the museum's remit and realised that for a museum that was about the uh, social history of conflict and the impact of war on human society, that perhaps we weren't fully dealing with that remit in that we weren't looking in significant enough ways at themes of genocide and ethnic violence. The Holocaust, I think, undoubtedly was a watershed moment in the 20th century. Uh, it's an event which actually gives us the, the word genocide. Genocide as a term didn't exist before the Holocaust. A lot of them were like younger than us and they were still taken to concentration camps and you saw objects that belonged to them and it was l the last thing they had. It made me feel quite um, lucky that I'm not living in those kind of conditions. You go on, on a visit there and all those learners, whether they're people who pick up things visually, whether they're people who listen intently, or whether they just like to be up and doing, um, it, it suits everybody. I was really, wow, you know, amazing. I was really excited. The Year 9 History Group from Aylesford School in Warwick is visiting the Holocaust exhibition at the Imperial War Museum, a trip the school makes every year. It's part of uh, a Key Stage 3 unit called the 20th Century World and we try and focus in on three parts of it and having looked in depth at World War I trenches, we're now our second in-depth unit is the Holocaust. Um, we've just started it and we use this part of the visit uh, at the start of the unit. We do that because we want to challenge their expectations of what they think that word, the Holocaust, means, uh, to give them an overview of what the uh, Holocaust was about. Good afternoon. Welcome to the Imperial War Museum. My name's Paul. I work here in the Education Department. So what interests me is why you think you're here. Yeah. We have about 25,000 students every year who we have close contact with. Uh, say in a museum you can have different expertise, people, people like yourself who know about different subjects. OK, yeah, and what other sorts of things? Um, like when in the classroom the teacher can say like cob bits can be cramped, but when you're here you see actually how cramped the cob bits can be. To me that's the most important thing about visiting a museum. It's the sorts of things that are on display that you wouldn't normally have a chance to see. And I'm going to show you an object now and ask you various questions about it and let's together just see how much we can discover maybe about the person who owned it. First question. What can you tell me about the owner of this little shoe? Uh, he's a young child. A young child. He's a young child. Very yeah. good. You told me three things. Gender. He is a young, so something about age, um, a young child. The okay. experience of, of all um, students, really, yeah, to yeah. say one object like that little shoe tends to be about the same. They tend to go through a, a kind of similar arc of learning where um, at first it's, it's very relaxed and quite informal and we're just talking about an everyday common object. Could you just tell us how is the sole here fixed to the upper? Um, it looks like with nails or something like metal. That's right, little pins. And how many pieces of uh, material is this shoe made out of, or the sole here made out of? Uh, three. Three, yeah. Now have a look at the sole on your shoe. How many pieces is it made from? One. One. What's it made from? Once the narrative starts to unfold, they become very focused and very attentive to the particular story of that individual child. We do know one more thing about this shoe. This shoe was found in a place called Auschwitz-Birkenau. What can you tell me about Auschwitz? It's a concentration camp. It's the largest of all the Nazi concentration camps in German-occupied Europe. Because of the uh, material inside and on display inside the exhibition, because of the nature of the subject, we found that we would insist on an age limit and we would also insist that every school um, had an orientation session and a feedback session before and after their visit to the exhibition. So when you go through the museum, I'd like you to choose three more objects that you find particularly interesting because when you come back here, you will use those objects to build your own small exhibition on the Holocaust. And finally, you will present your exhibitions to the rest of the class.
some of the images were a bit disturbing with all the dead bodies being moved around and what they used to um, do the gas chambers and stuff. And when I saw the Zygon B, it was a bit shocking because I didn't think they would have that. The cattle truck is not normally something that you would be able to be in, so I thought that was really good, the way they designed it and laid it out. I didn't know about that. That's how they were actually transported there. I thought it was just like a normal train or something. It was a bit disturbing, really, because it was so small, and when you think about how many people had to be packed into them, it would have been really claustrophobic, and it was quite scary to think about all the people who were in there. I didn't expect it to be that big, um, but the model really showed like how many people there were and the size of the camps and everything. The train with unloading all the people, I didn't think that that would be that on that scale. There was a diary with a poem which was really sad and it was the two girls that were friends and the one um, was a Jew and she wasn't supposed to see her friend but she still kept sneaking over to see her and she wrote her a poem about how if they got split up they'd still be friends which really kind of brought it home how real it was. The Jewish family were executed I think but the friend got to live because she wasn't a Jew. Yeah I thought that was quite horrific and disgusting um, but it was done so we have to kind of accept that first of all is there any sort of general questions or comments about the exhibition did you find the exhibition useful interesting I think that um, the way it came across was really good because a teacher can just say something to you and you don't really believe it but I think uh, that seeing it does make you believe it. It came across as gory and it made it real and it brought it across as dramatic, but it didn't make it disturbing. The, so the feedback is more a space to allow them to reflect. Because they thought that um, the blonder you were, the better you were. And I thought it just like made it really real how superficial it was. To ask questions and to make comments and to begin to process. The ones I picked uh, was the death cart. The, all the scattered like stuff that they found in the concentration camps. Rather than just expecting them to get on a coach and go back to school after what might have been a very emotional um, experience for many of them. As well, the bone sc scattering thing for hiding, hiding the evidence of all the, of all the dead bodies. It's just... What I'd like you to do is to try and agree now for your group which three objects would you choose and why would you choose those three objects? But really try to take from this the way that history is made. The museum that you've seen today, the exhibition that you've seen today, is just one version of those events. Thank you very much. I think you've been a really interesting group and I hope that you continue to consider some of these issues when you get back to school as well. Thank you. Two days after their visit to the exhibition, the Year 9 history pupils are about to have their first follow-up session back in school. Right, morning then. We've been on the trip on Monday. We've now come back and I've got three things I'm hoping that we're going to be able to achieve by the end of this lesson. We like our students to feel involved with their learning, so rather than it just being sort of done to them, and quite often we ask them for their feedback on, on things that we've done. They have different evidence and things. because In this case, I wanted the group to comment on what they felt the benefits of going to London had been, because clearly if it's not answering a need for students, then 
uh, there wouldn't be any point in repeating it next year. A man called David Irvin, and his line of argument was that the evidence he put together suggested that it was just a great exaggeration. I wanted yes, them to pull to together die, what they had seen world. and heard and felt on Monday. Um, and I felt the best way of doing that was to challenge um, the, the, the whole concept of whether there was a Holocaust or not. Them presenting back as though in a court of law a speech explaining why they could justify that yes, the Holocaust did indeed happen. Um, I felt was a, a good way of pulling together what they'd done. Um, letters as well as diary entries and uh, poems. So, I mean, you could, you could develop on the, the camp's idea in terms of the evidence that's there, that it wasn't just a few people, and it wasn't just accidental either, was it, really? No. Yeah. First of all, look at the evidence, and you want to yeah. see which parts, the main parts, you want to use um, along with the pictures. I, I explain about pictures as well. So that's A. That's A. We have a unit of work that starts by looking at how children were uh, isolated and ostracised by both teachers but also, also other children and, and builds towards being uh, moved into ghettos and ultimately towards the concentration camps. The first piece of evidence is the tractor pushing away the bodies. This was when the British soldiers entered Bergen-Belsen. We're looking at the uh, consequences, I suppose, in terms of what happened yeah. when it all came out into the open and what could have been done about it, really. Um, obviously, these huge amounts of bodies and belongings couldn't have come from nowhere. Finally, our main evidence is the accounts of survivors and Nazi officers describing the chaos at the time. Thousands of diary entries and letters were discovered. All saying we're we're challenging them to think as real historians. It's not baby stuff anymore, they and they love it. Too much solid evidence exists for anyone to be able to disprove that this horrific event happened. Thank you. For both the teachers and students in the history department at Aylesford School, the visit to the Imperial War Museum's Holocaust exhibition is an invaluable way of stimulating engagement with this key stage three unit. The depth of knowledge that the uh, people that take us round have, uh, we find is invaluable. We couldn't mirror that as successfully here. I've got more sensitive towards it, uh, more sensitive with other people and how they must have felt losing their sons, daughters, cousins, and uncles and aunts, and just losing all their relatives and friends. I think it's made everyone a bit more enthusiastic because we know a bit more about it now and we've seen a more real side of it. So when we read about things in textbooks, we can kind of relate it to real things we saw. It's made me very interested in the subject now. Um, I'll probably enjoy my lessons a bit better because I want to learn more about it because the museum was very, very inspiring. <laughs>